Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke and I'm continuing the series Master Databricks and Open Source Apache Spark. This is lesson 28. We're continuing in-depth coverage of PySpark and we're going to particularly dig into how to code Pandas Scalar user-defined functions. Not Scala, which is a language, a programming language, but Scalar user-defined functions. And we'll see in a minute what I mean by that. My last video I was getting into how to code new pandas user-defined functions. So this is a whole new way to do things as of Spark 3.0. And I did cover already series to series, iterator of series to iterator of series, and iterator of multiple series to iterator of series. Those were covered in my last video, so please go back. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go back and watch that. I left series to scalar off that list because I wanted to focus separately on it, primarily because as we'll see, series to scalar is an aggregate function and it's quite different from the other three. So not a lot of slides here. I'm just going to jump right into the code. This code is available on GitHub and I will put a link in the description so you can download it and use it for your own use. Just remember, test your code, make sure it fits your own standards, etc. Um, no guarantees on any code. I have a lot of additional code at the beginning I'm not going to review. I covered this in detail in my last video. So again, go back to that if you need to cover that. But it talks about setting configurations to properly use Apache Arrow, which optimizes the uh, function's performance in addition to PyArrow and a bunch of other settings to check like uh, compatibility and making sure things would work correctly. So we're going to jump right down to code cell 10. Now, before you'll be able to run this also, if you haven't been following along and doing everything you're supposed to be doing, then you won't have the database AW project. So you'll need to go back to video lesson nine to be able to get that. And again, I'll also post that in the description so you can go back and create the tables needed. Now, I'm only really using in this one fact internet sales. So that's all you need. If you want to go back and just get that one file uh, and upload it and create a table from it, that's fine too. So we're just going to use Spark SQL to one, change the database context to AW project. And then I want to create a data frame, SPDF underscore sales, by running a SQL statement. And it's just going to be saying select customer key, order day key, sales amount, and total product cost from fact internet sales. And I'm limiting it to 10 just because I'm not really out here to show you the performance things you'll get from this though these functions are designed to perform really well and at scale so I'm gonna run this and you can see here uh, below these are the columns I got back so I got a customer key which is an integer order day key integer and a sales amount and total product cost double types gonna just display it and get an idea what does this data look like before we jump in we can see you know the customer key is a unique identifier per customer the order day key is Whenever, whenever a given order was placed by a customer. And then we have the sales amount for that order and the total product cost. So let's talk about the series to scalar function. The first thing to know about it is it takes a series, which means really a data frame column or a should say spark data frame column. So it's a list of a consistent value, right? Like sales amount. So a series to scalar means it's going to return a scalar value. A scalar value means it's a single discrete value like an integer or in our case a float or double things like that so it's going to take essentially a column of values but it's only going to return a single value so that's why it's really an aggregate function uh, also we can see that it, we define an aggregation from one or more pandas series again to the scalar value so we don't have to restrict this to just passing in a single column we could pass in two three or four columns etc and you can see here that we can use this function with the select, so the data frame select method, we'll see how to do that. The with column, which allows us to create a new column, the group by dot agg function, and uh, also with the, the window function. So we can do windowing, which is really nice. It's important to know that this type of UDF does not support partial aggregation and all the data for each group is loaded into memory. So make sure you have enough room for it. So the first thing we're gonna do is import pandas as PD and from PySpark SQL functions, we're gonna import pandas UDF. Now we're gonna use this because we need it to create a decorator pandas UDF here. And the decorator is going to essentially modify our function to allow it to integrate with Spark and Arrow. We're gonna define our function. 
We're going to call it AVG for average margin percent UDF. And notice, very similar to before, we're going to be using type hints. We're going to say sales amount's the name, but the type hint is PD series. So it's going to be a series that we're passing in. And of course, we have another series we're going to pass in, which is product cost. And that's also PD series. So those are type hints. What's it going to return? Well, that little arrowish thing, the dash greater than sign, points to float. So it's going to return a float. Now, we don't have a float in the PySpark data frame, if you notice. It's actually expecting doubles instead. That's where this comes in. It's telling it that it's going to get back double. We're going to do a calculation. We're going to calculate a column called profit margin, just as we did before, which is going to take the difference of sales amount, subtracting product cost, and then dividing that by sales amount. The idea is to get a sense of what's the profit margin or percent we're getting off of a given sale. Now we know we can't return each individual row, so we say return profit margin, but then we're going to actually return the mean, so the average. We want to return one single value. So it's going to take all of those individual values of profit margin we're calculating and then get the mean of it, and that's what it will return. Now that we've created the function, let's take a look at using it. So we have our SPDF sales data frame, and we're going to use the select method, which really is sort of like a, a different syntax, but very similar to the select of a SQL statement. But it just identifies columns we want to get. So we're going to say select, and we're going to just pass a function name in with the columns names in quotes. So we've got average percent UDF, and then parentheses, sales amount, and total product cost. And we'll append a method show so that we get a look at the values. Let's see how that looks. And as I have mentioned, you might have expected if you weren't paying attention closely, we'd get multiple rows back. But we don't. We get a single value. It's a scalar. So the scalar value is 0 0.41698, et cetera, et cetera. So it's actually the average profit margin, or AVG margin percent. It's the average. So let's try this again. But this time, we're going to pass it in with a group by. So we're going to say SPDF underscore sales group by and we'll group it by the customer key. So we want to get this calculation done for each customer. Now in order to call our function we have to use the AGG method and then we can pass in the function. And we can see now we've got our customer keys and our average uh, profit margin for each individual customer. So it's actually passing in each group and doing our calculation for each group. So if you're like me, you may think, well, gee, I'd like to include some other aggregations with my custom function. In other words, I might want to be able to see the total sales amount and total product cost along with the uh, average margin percent. However, you're not allowed to do that. Let me show you what happens when we try. We get an exception and it says you cannot use a mixture of aggregate functions and group aggregate pandas UDF. So it's pretty clear these are not a mix and match. Finally, I want to show you how to use a window function. Now, I cover window functions for SQL in lesson 16. So I'll again post another link in the description. You can go back to that. But hopefully you'll follow the entire series and get all of the benefit of this. But lesson 16 does talk a lot about what are window functions and how do we use them. The gist of a window function, though, is that you can mix detail rows of data in with various uh, levels of summarization or aggregations with it. So I can show detailed customer rows with total sales per customer next to another column that shows total sales overall, etc. And the window function is what allows us to do that. So to use a window function, first I need to import from PySpark SQL the window function itself. Then I'm going to say w equal window. And this is just continuing my line statement. Partitioning by is how we're grouping it. So again, similar to above by customer key. But here we're going to say, what do we want to do with the detail rows? So it's going to basically just display the detail rows. So let's try using it. Once we've declared this, this is stored in W. That's now our window function. We're going to use our data frame, call with column this time. So the with column method is used to create a new column, typically a calculated column, right? So we're going to create a new column, call it average profit margin. And then here we're going to call our function. And then we say over. And then in here, it's the little w. That's our window function we created above here. Let's run this. 
And you can see we still have our average profit margin as we did before, but now we're getting detail rows, right? And so we are mixing detailed rows here with a level of aggregation, which is our aggregate user defined function. So that's pretty cool. If we had multiple orders, say, for at any given customer, we would see those listed multiple times, but the same average profit margin because that's aggregated at the customer level. Wrapping up, this has really been the conclusion video for new Pandas user defined functions, which is a new standard that came out as a Spark 3.0, so fresh off the press. In the last video, we had covered most of it really. We had done series to series, and iterated a series to iterative series, and iterated multiple series to iterative series. But in this video, I wanted to cover series to scalar. A scalar again means a single value, and don't confuse it with the programming language Scala. Uh, scalar is just a single value coming back from our function, but again, it's aggregating over a series. The other thing I did want to mention is series to scalar is functionality that was added specifically to support the Python language. Previously, you could create something called a Spark user-defined aggregate function. However, that could only be done in the Scala <laughs> programming language. So this is new functionality. Python is catching up more and more to what Scala could do. In fact, uh, what I read in the documentation is that the old way of doing it with Scala is being deprecated and the series to scalar as we've seen here is uh, sort of the new and improved version and proof that Python is really the first class language now on Apache Spark. So I want to thank you for watching. Please as always leave comments, let me know what you think, uh, questions etc. and uh, please let other people know about my channel. I'm seeing I'm getting uh, a lot of good feedback which is great. And until next time, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.